Chapter 41 Clank. Clank. The sound of metal clashing together reverberated across the surroundings as individuals could be seen sparring against each other or against the puppets in the training ground. Not so far from them, in the middle area of the training ground, a lone boy was currently sheathing and unsheathing the katana in his hands. As this had been a common sight for the past three weeks, no one paid attention to it any longer. They just brushed it off as the guy being crazy. I can feel myself reaching the threshold to the minor realm of mastery. After spending most of my time training and attending classes, a week had passed. Before I knew it, my level of mastery of the Kiki style had improved drastically. If before I could only execute the first movement once or twice, now I could do it five times before running out of mana. Gripping the handle of my katana tighter, I emptied my mind and focused on training. I must constantly unsheathe the sword in my heart. Draw, slash, draw, slash, and accumulate the mana in my body that was constantly growing stronger as I trained. If I could do this 10,000 times flawlessly without any loss in movement, only then would I achieve the minimum standard required to seamlessly execute the Kiki style. Soon everything around me disappeared. The scornful glances from the people around me, the loud sound of people practicing. Only me and my mind. Draw the katana, slash out. Draw the katana, slash out. Draw the katana, slash out. As if I was in a trance, I didn't stop until my mana and stamina were completely spent. Taking a look at my surroundings, it was currently already dark outside. Around me, I could only see the silhouettes of a few individuals training. Ding. Wiping off the sweat that had accumulated on my forehead, I glanced at my phone which was constantly ringing since a while ago. Turning on my phone the first thing I saw was a large notification in red. It finally happened, breaking news. Thobia's Church of CB Pharmaceuticals has been assassinated last night in his high-security apartment. Reports and investigations point the killer to be ranked 37 Silent Creeper. Lightly smiling, I turned off my phone and went back to training. Talk about perfect timing. Was starting to get impatient from my slow progress. By the end of today, I could finally kiss goodbye to my poor life. Well to be honest, as I will spend most of my money on potions the luxurious life that I was dreaming of was still a long stretch away. Actually, now that I thought about it, wasn't it a bit fucked up that I was celebrating someone's death? Though I indeed made a lot of money, it was at the expense of someone's life. Thinking thus far, I slapped my cheeks. He was destined to die anyway, nothing I could do about it. I only took advantage of the inevitable. Could I have stopped it? Yes, I could have, but having been in this world for a while now, I realized that compassion was unneeded. It was every man to himself in this world, there was no need for such thing like compassion. If I wanted to be strong, I needed to become apathetic to this sort of stuff as this probably won't be the last time a similar situation happens. Ring. 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 Hum. Who could be calling me at this hour? Noticing that someone was calling my phone, I went and picked it up. Soon a large smirk appeared on my face. Picking up the phone, I cheerfully answered. Oh my, who could this be? Dot you. How? After a short pause, the person on the other side of the phone spoke. His voice which was usually deep raised a few pitches. What are you talking about? Cheekily smiling, I teased small snake who was on the other side of the phone. Sigh. Well it doesn't matter. You were right. How do you wish to proceed? Hum. Hold it until tomorrow and sell it in the morning as soon the stock exchange opens at 9.30 a.m. Dot but wouldn't it be better if we hold it for a bit longer? Well from a normal person's point of view yes. Dot but well, let's just say that it's better if we don't become too greedy and play it safe. Alright, I'll trust you this once, next time you see me I bet you'll get on your feet to kiss my shoes. Sure, sure, I'll call you later once I've settled everything. I, talk. With a grin still plastered on my face, I hung up the phone. I wasn't sure why but I really enjoyed teasing Small Snake. Ah, it's about time I headed back, collecting my stuff, I deposited my sword back and left for my dorm. I was in a pretty good mood as I felt that I was only a few days away from reaching the minor reel of mastery of my Kiki style, which would considerably boost my strength. Morning, Saturday. Ring, ring, ring. Waking me up from my sleep was the constant ringing of my phone. Lazily stretching my arm, I tapped all over my bed until I finally felt a small rectangular object on my hand. Unlocking the phone, I answer the call, hello, who's this? Hearing my groggy voice, the other person on the phone paused slightly and asked. It's me. Did you just wake up? Yay. Ah sorry about that but I came to tell you some good news. What good news? After removing all the fees your total profit stands at 14,673 million you. That's a lot of money, is that seriously how a normal person reacts to having just made this much money? Ah, well I'm still quite sleepy so it still hasn't hit me yet. Dot but is that all you called me for? No there's a bigger issue at hand. What? Sitting up on my bed, I held the phone closer to my ear. Sorry but it's not safe if I tell you on the phone as someone might tap on our conversation. Is it that serious? Dot yes. Hearing Small Snake's solemn voice I let out a long breath and said. Okay. When do you plan to meet up? How about tomorrow at Epsilon Cafe in Refton Road, 10 a.m. 
Yeah. Okay. I'll see you then. Talk. Hanging up the phone I pinched the middle of my brows for a couple of seconds before finally letting out a long sigh. This was going to be a long week. Washing up, I headed outside my dorm. Looking at my bank account that was now 14 million you heavier, a smirk appeared on my face. Was this how it felt to be rich? Not bad. Where are you headed to? Section C please. Okay. Sitting inside a minibus, I patiently waited for the driver to start the engine. Right now I was headed to the C-section of the campus which was quite far from where I was staying. Dot now that I had enough money, it was about time that I finally get in contact with the person that could provide me with below market price potions. I sort of dreaded this moment. Let's just say that the person I was going to interact with was very, hum, quirky? Section C? Which area? Northside please, alright, we'll arrive in 15 minutes. Starting the engine, the van soon sped off into the distance. Sighing, I looked outside of the window. These days I was sighing quite a lot. With everything that was going on, I couldn't get one moment of peace. Staring at the constantly changing scenery, my stomach slightly churned due to nervousness. What I was about to do next would either make or break me. Let's just hope everything goes well, we're here. Right on cue, the van stopped in front of a large facility. Thank you, thanking the driver I walked towards the facility. Large metal fences covered the facility, where enormous buildings could be seen behind them. The sheer size of the buildings caused me to gape in awe. Stop, arriving at the entrance of the facility, two guards appeared before me. They were wearing black uniforms with the school insignia imprinted on their chests. They had black military hats and exuded strong pressure. I'd estimate them to be at around rank D or less, as although the pressure they exuded was strong, it wasn't to the point that made me feel overwhelmed. Handing one of the guards my student ID card, they scanned it briefly and after everything checked out, they granted me entry. Schlup. Arriving in front of the main building of Section C, two transparent retractable doors opened up. A wave of cold refreshing air coming from the AC instantly hit me. The interior of the building was very modern and slick. The most dominant color was white, and everything was decorated with a simplistic design. Arriving in front of the reception of the building, a beautiful young lady smiled at me. How may I help you? Or, I would like to meet Melissa Hall please. The smile of the young clerk lady instantly disappeared. What replaced it was a look of slight disgust as she coldly said. I'm sorry but this is a research facility, not a place where you can come as you please to court Melissa. Frankly, you're not the first one that has tried this and you probably won't be the last one. Dot and let me be honest with you, you're not qualified. Being berated by the young clerk lady, my eye twitched a couple of times. How did it turn out like this? Dot air, I am not here to court her. Hearing what I said, the young lady smirked and proceeded to cross her arms. Oh? So what are you here for? She didn't believe me at all. I'm actually her classmate and I have a business proposition for her. Oh wow. This is the third person that has used this excuse. Hearing her sarcastic voice, veins started bulging from my forehead. Taking a deep breath to calm myself down I said. Foo. Dot can you just relay it to her, if she denies me I'll just leave. He he, fine, laughing lightly, the young clerk lady picked up the phone on the counter and dialed a number. What's your name? Ren Dover, alright, hello. Answering the call, a crisp and pleasant voice entered the young girl's ear. Hey Melissa, it's me, Rosie, Rosie from reception. Yes. How can I help you? I got someone here that insists on meeting you. Dot why did you call me for this? You know that I don't care about this sort of stuff. Just send him out. Covering the speaker of the phone, Rosie leaned forwards and smiled triumphantly at me. You heard her, rolling my eyes, I said, just tell her I have something important to tell her. He says he's got something important to say, don't care, if that's all I'll hang up. By the way, what is the name of the student that is trying to meet me? Air. If I don't remember wrong it's something along the lines of, bend over? Multiples veins popped on my forehead as I tried my best not to assault her. Seeing my reaction, Rosie stuck her tongue out and said. Dot ops, I made a mistake I meant Ren Dover, dot let him in. See she doesn't want to, eh? Did I hear wrongly? No, let him in, talk. Before Rosie could finish speaking, Melissa hung up the phone leaving her there dumbfoundedly staring at her phone. What's going on? Doesn't Melissa usually detest interacting with people? A million questions entered her mind as she stood rooted on her spot. Well, 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 look at how the roles have reversed Miss Rosie. Smirking, I looked at Rosie who seemed to be lost in her own world. You what did you do? Pointing at me, Rosie looked at me as if I performed some sort of witchcraft. Nothing really. Dot hey, why are you backing away from me? As I was speaking I noticed Rosie backing away from me. Almost as if she was scared of me. Wait don't tell me she really believes I did something to Melissa? Cough, nothing really, just getting your pass. Awkwardly coughing, Rosie quickly handed me a card and shooed me away. Looking back at the reception strangely, I shook my head and made my way towards Melissa's lab. I couldn't be bothered to fix this misunderstanding. Fortunately, there was a mini GPS map on the card that Rosie gave me, preventing me from getting lost. 
Soon I was in front of a large metal door. Knock. Knocking once, I nervously waited for the door to open. To be honest, I wasn't expecting to be let through this easily. I was prepared to spill some of my secrets and hook her into meeting me, but before I could even take out one of my trump cards Melissa allowed me to meet her. Something was fishy. Chapter 42 Sitting down on a large white table, I nervously drank the cup of water in front of me. If I said I wasn't nervous at the moment that would be a lie. In fact, my back was drenched in sweat. That was because sitting in front of me was, Melissa Hall, one of the main protagonists. Wearing the azure blue uniform provided by the academy, Melissa sat down in front of me. She was currently elegantly drinking the hot tea that was provided by a servant standing behind her. Which by the way was glaring in my direction. Taking a quick look at her one word came into my mind. Beautiful, she had smooth and milky skin that did not have any flaws. Most notably, her most dazzling feature was her pair of large enchanting light blue eyes that were further emphasized by her thinly framed glasses. As she sat in front of me, a cold and arrogant aura expanded from her graceful body making it seem as if anything was beneath her. What are you staring so absent-mindedly at? A. Eh? Waking me up from my stupor was Melissa's annoyed voice as she put her teacup down. Had I known you were mentally challenged, I wouldn't have bothered meeting you. Feeling a slight tap on her shoulder, Melissa's eyes slightly twitched, Oh my, it seems like my tongue has slipped. Please find it within your heart to forgive this pitiful lady. TCH, clicking her tongue, Melissa slightly glared at her servant behind her. Seeing that he remained unfazed, crossing her arms and legs, she then proceeded to look at me. When most guys lay their eyes upon me, they shower me with praises and tell me how my beauty is unmatched throughout the whole academy. At least it seems you're not one of those corny guys. Don't worry, if you just state your purpose and leave right after, I might make a slight effort in remembering your name. Dot yup, this prickly personality, it was definitely her alright. This was exactly why I tried my best to avoid her. If not for the fact that she was the only one that could provide me with cheap high quality potions, I would have never for the love of God even have bothered talking to her. Ah but, if you're here looking for a chance to date me then you might as well pack up your stuff and leave. I don't talk to the delusional. No, thank you, stopping her right before she could continue speaking any further abuse, I went straight to the point. I'm here to make a deal, oh? A deal? Is this your roundabout way of asking me for a date? It's a business proposition, though she was skeptical, Melissa paused and allow me to speak. Go on, I would like Melissa Hal Kook, before I could finish my sentence a strong pressure started emanating from Melissa as her sharp eyes looked down on me. Because of how sudden this was, I was caught off guard. Raising my hand up, I said. Dot let me finish, watch your words carefully. I would like for you, Melissa Hall to sell me the potions that you've made. Oh? Carefully scrutinizing me up and down, she shook her head in disappointment. The only reason I came here was because you slightly interested me. I mean you were the guy that came up with the mana poisoning theory. Ah, oh, thank you, funnily enough, I was also doing similar research, too bad I was only missing the experimentation phase. Shit so that's who came up with the mana poisoning solution. No wonder her servant was glaring at me. Honestly, since then Professor Rompaus has always pestered me nonstop regarding the theory. It was only after I thoroughly explained the theory behind it that he finally relented and let me be. I thought that you wanted to talk to me about something important. Dot but it seems like I got the wrong idea about you. Let me be clear, I am not your potion salve. Standing up, Melissa prepared to leave. It was nice knowing you. Dot air, whatever you are called. Wait, seeing her leave, I immediately tried to call for her only to be ignored. Just as she was about to open the door, I finally decided to release the bait that I had planned to use from the beginning. Oh well it's really too bad. Dot and here I was thinking of helping you solve Slovakia's monster energy transfer theory. Dot tut, 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 what a pity. Halting her steps, Melissa looked back at me. You. Dot you, what did you say? Gritting her teeth and clenching her hands, Melissa glared in my direction only to be left speechless as I laid my feet on the table and nonchalantly picked my ear. Looking up, and seeing Melissa I said, EHH. I thought you were leaving. Shoo, shoo, if you're leaving then just leave. You don't need to take pity on me. Seeing that I got a reaction from her, I continued with my act. With a person like her, if you didn't take the initiative then you would stand to lose more than you could gain. Waving my hand to shoo her away, I took out my phone and started a game. Bam. Smacking her hand on the table, Melissa smilingly looked at me. Well her mouth was smiling but her eyes weren't. Oh? I thought you were leaving? I had a change of heart. Well isn't that great? Putting my phone back in my pocket, I returned to my serious self. If I really pushed her too much, then I wouldn't even know how I died. Kiam. Kum, so do we have a deal? How do I know you're not lying? Squinting her eyes, Melissa once again exuded her pressure over me. To be fair, it wasn't actually that much. She was probably around the same level of strength as me at the moment. Maybe I was stronger. But well, it wasn't something that I should be proud of since combat wasn't her expertise. How about this, I'll give you half of the theory beforehand and the other half once the deal is done. Hum. Dot but what if the second half doesn't work? 
Rolling my eyes, I said, do you really think I have the balls to give you some non-functioning theory? Good point, gesturing her servant behind her, Melissa took out her tablet and started writing a contract. We soon spent the next 15 minutes agreeing on the terms of the contract. This okay. Yup, everything seems good, looking at the contents of the contract, I nodded in satisfaction. Basically in exchange for my research Melissa would provide me with intermediate potions, provided that I would pay for the cost of the raw materials. The potions that she would make included, stamina recovery potion, muscle recovery potion, strength enhancement potion, and so on. Potions were graded from low, mid, intermediate, high, advanced, and premium, with each grade being a major improvement on the last. Before, the potions I always used were low-leveled ones, hence why they were cheap, but now thanks to Melissa's fine skills, I could use intermediate potions at prices far below the current market price. Then sign it, seeing the smirk that had appeared on my face, Melissa's mouth twitched as she urged me to sign the contract. She could hope for nothing more but to wipe the smile off my face. Tapping on the tablet, a holographic paper appeared before me. Using my finger I swiftly signed the virtual paper. Alright hold your end of the deal, okay, taking out a small USB from my bag I handed it to Melissa. Inside of the USB was the first half of the Slovaki monster energy transfer theory. To summarize what it was, it was basically a theory that proved that monster cores were created by monsters accumulating energy inside of their bodies. Though what I handed Melissa was not perfect it had all the correct concepts and data to prove the theory. A lot of scientific terms and data were missing, but with the aid of the web I made the research somewhat presentable. Plus a genius like Melissa could easily understand what was inferred from the paper. This theory was extremely important to Melissa and the world because if she could somehow, with the aid of theory, produce an artificial core it would create a major scientific breakthrough. Cores would no longer be something that could only be found if someone was lucky. Just the levels at which humanity would develop would drastically increase the chances of the world surviving. Well, to be honest, even though she was one step closer to her dream of creating an artificial core, she was still missing the crucial piece. Dot but I wasn't going to help her with regards to that. If she pushed through the full theory regarding the creation of artificially created cores, then she would undoubtedly die. When she pushed this theory forward in the novel, it was already the late stages of the novel and she was strong enough to defend herself against S-ranked villains. Because of how world-shaking artificial cores were, demons did everything they possibly could to try to kill whoever was responsible for creating them. They used every means possible to eliminate any traces of this theory from existing. It was that much a threat. If Melissa were to be subjected to this at this point in the novel then God knows what the consequences would be. I had already taken a huge risk by giving her the Slovakis monster energy transfer theory. Though this would have little to no impact on the story, it was better to reduce any possible liabilities. Dot yup. I scammed her. TCH. What did you say your name was? Ren Dover, Ren Dover. Repeating the name a few times, Melissa looked at me dead in the eyes and said. Do you know what's the scary part about women? Feeling the atmosphere become tense I took a step back. What if I don't want to know? It's the fact that we never forget our grudges. Personally, I always pay my debt back. With interest. Gulp. Hearing her words, I involuntarily swallowed a mouthful of saliva. As I was the author, I knew she wasn't lying. If she set her mind to something she will try to achieve it regardless of what stood in her way. Hee <laughs> hee, I had heard the famed name of Melissa Hall, the most beautiful, charming, and generous woman in the whole academy. Oh my, would you look at that, it seems like time is tight and must go to my appointment. Let's get along with each other and not hold grudges haha. <laughs> Pretending to look at my watch, I came up with an excuse and immediately left. Staying any longer would only spell bad news for me. Watching Ren leave, Melissa's face darkened. Arriving next to Melissa and noticing her expression, her servant asked. Miss, do you want me to deal with him? Thinking for a moment, she shook her head. Forget about it, I still need my second part of the theory and it's not like I didn't benefit from this deal. Though she said that, Melissa was fuming, to actually dare take advantage of her like that. Melissa suppressed the fury rising from her heart and engraved the man's name in her head. Ren Dover, Ren Dover. Congratulations, you have succeeded in making me remember your name. Chapter 43 Pock. 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 Inside of a large spacious room, a lone figure bounced around a punching bag. His figure seemed to melt with the shadows around the room, appearing and disappearing constantly. Each time his figure emerged from the shadows his fist would instantly connect with the punching bag resulting in a small indentation appearing on the bag. The force of each punch was so strong that small shockwaves were released every time he hit the punching bag. If not for the fact that the material used for making the punching bag was unique, it would have already been broken a dozen times over. Huff, 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 stopping, the figure's body which seemed to be sculpted to perfection, heavily gulped for air. Droplets of sweat dripped all over his shirtless figure, giving him a wild and manly aura. Taking a water bottle from the ground, the handsome figure took big gulps of water. Soon he exhaled in satisfaction. After drinking his fill, the figure dropped to the ground exhausted and leaned on the wall. Knock. Knock. Hearing the sound of someone knocking, the figure indifferently spoke. 
Come in, soon the door opened, revealing the features of a burly individual whose hair was cut in a busket. His towering figure that looked to be nearing two meters made him look intimidating. Young Master Jin, I heard you called me, apathetically nodding his head, Jin slowly stood up and grabbed a towel from a nearby table. Drying his wet hair, he slowly approached Arnold who stood with his back straight and breathing lightly, not daring to even make a sound. Bam! Arriving beside Arnold, Jin punched his stomach with all his might, causing Arnold's body to bend over as his eyes shot wide open. Gua! Ghhh! Khhh! To actually be unable to deal with a mere bug. Disdainfully looking at Arnold, Jin threw the towel that was drenched in his sweat at his face. Stand up, Khhh! Holding his stomach, Arnold slowly stood up as Jin ordered. To think you would resort to such stupid tricks to harass someone that isn't even worth my notice. B but. Shut up, Jin's mood was terrible. Recalling the lone figure sitting on the right side of the classroom, Jin's teeth clenched. Ren. Ren Dover. That was the name of the student that fouled his mood. Previously, he didn't really put Ren in his sight, he only knew that Arnold had a slight grudge against him, but just recently he received a certain piece of news that irked him. It told him that Melissa had granted Ren a meeting with her, and moreover, it seemed that they talked for over ten minutes. Not even he could talk to Melissa for that long despite the fact that they were living in the same dorm. With a dark face, Jin said, I'll ask Troy to deal with him, at least he can finish the job. Hearing Troy's name being mentioned, Arnold immediately protested. Please let me. Oh? Seeing Arnold's determination, Jin couldn't help but glance at him. What makes you think you can do it after failing already? Because Kevin was the one that prevented me from finishing the mission. Hum I guess you're right, patting Arnold in the shoulder, Jin gloomily said. Make sure you make his life as miserable, yes. Nodding solemnly, Arnold left the training room, bomb. Tiesha soon after Arnold left the room, Jin walked back to the punching machine and punched it with all his might. A large shockwave swept the room and fine granules of sand started falling from the sack as a tear appeared on it. How dare you approach Melissa? Phew, I thought I was lost. After switching buses four times, I finally arrived at the appointed location. A large fancy board with the words less than less than Epsilon Cafe greater than greater than imprinted on it immediately caught my attention. Entering the cafe, instantly the heavy scent of coffee hit my nostrils. Wooden chairs and tables spread all over the cafe. A relaxed and tranquil atmosphere enveloped the place promoting me to relax along with the atmosphere. Looking around I soon found Small Snake wearing a black baseball cap and a mask, Small Snake sat in the corner of the cafe. I was easily able to find him because he was wearing exactly what he used to wear whenever he would meet Kevin. Taking note of that, I went and ordered an iced latte. After paying and receiving my latte I headed to where Small Snake was. We had agreed beforehand that we both must order a latte beforehand in order to make sure we got the right person. Since our faces were covered, we had no idea how we looked like so this was the easiest method. You, comfortably sitting on the green sofa in front of Small Snake I placed my latte down and hung my arm on the side of the sofa. Seeing me sit down, Small Snake placed his drink down and looked at me strangely. Dot are you wearing a face mask? Nope, hearing my straightforward response, Small Snake sighed and shook his head. Aren't you afraid I will rat you out and keep all the money you made? Nope, I have a good eye for people and my instincts are telling me that you're not a person that would rat me out for small gains. Well, I wasn't lying when I said I had a good eye for people. Knowing my novel very well I knew exactly what kind of person he was. It's just that he didn't need to know this part. I wouldn't really call those small gains though, you're weird. Laughing lightly, Small Snake shook his head and slowly took off his hat and mask. If you're willing to trust me that much, I might as well reciprocate. Soon his face was revealed. He had short black hair, deep green eyes, and a childish-looking face. However, despite his childish features, his demeanor was nothing but childish. He felt like someone who had gone through many ups and downs in his life. Someone that had survived many years in the most unimaginable places on earth. I'm glad I've gained your trust, so what did you call me here for? Taking a sip of my latte I went straight to the point. Looking around, Small Snake leaned forward and whispered. A third party is looking for my traces, the authorities? No. I've been very careful and though the authorities are indeed trying to trace me they are not doing it as aggressively as the other party. Hum, leaning back on my sofa, I contemplated for a bit before saying. It should be WV Pharmaceuticals, I also thought the same but I don't have concrete proof. No, it's them, what makes you so sure about that? Well, it's because they were the ones that ordered for Thobia's church's death. What? Abruptly standing up, Small Snake raised his voice and looked at me in disbelief. Oi, calm down, seeing everyone staring in our direction. I lightly sighed and urged him to sit down. Dot you. How do you know? Relax, I am not part of them if that's what you're thinking. Taking a sip of my latte I stared at Small Snake who was sitting up straight and eagerly waiting for me to continue speaking. If you want to know how I got the information I'm sorry but that's confidential. Even if I wanted to tell him who told me, I couldn't, it's not like I could explain to him that he was merely a side character of a world that I had created. Lightly disappointed, 
Small Snake said, No I get it, but is what you said real? 100%, since I was the one who wrote about the event I obviously knew who did it. WV the second largest company hired Silent Creeper to kill Thobia's church. The reason why he was able to kill him without any trace was because they had planted a mole inside of CB and made use of the mole to help Silent Creeper kill Thobia's church. The reason why they got rid of him was obvious. They wanted to be the number one. Having been overshadowed ever since opening, the higher UPS had decided they had enough. Since they couldn't defeat them legally, they resorted to killing their best researcher. What are you planning on doing with this information? Nothing, eh? Raising his voice, Small Snake looked at me as if he was looking at an idiot. I mean who wouldn't want to capitalize on this piece of news to make even more money? If I could prove that WV was behind Thobia's church's death then the stock of WV would plummet. Moreover, with my newly acquired funds, the amount of money I would make would be frightening. First off and more importantly, I don't have any proof. Even if I know that WV is behind it, I can't do anything about it since I can't prove my claim. That's true, secondly, if we do release the news about what had happened then the pharmaceutical market will completely crash resulting in prices for potions to increase drastically. Nodding, Small Snake thought for a bit and agreed with what I had said. Even if we did manage to release the news and prove that WV Pharmaceuticals were guilty it would cause total chaos in the industry resulting in prices for potions inflating drastically. Simply put, no one wanted that. I would gain nothing from it, and quite possibly, the thought of interacting with Melissa once again to renegotiate the prices of potions sent shivers down my spine. Okay, then I better leave now, since I know who the party is I no longer need to worry about being discovered. Alright, standing up, I took my half-empty latte and left the cafe with small snake, soon we split up. Checking my watch and seeing that I still had quite a bit of free time I decided to roam around and see if there was anything that could catch my interest. Though the streets weren't busy, I could see people going in and out of shops everywhere. There was a single road where cars passed and on the right and left side of the road shops filled the streets. Large billboards with beautiful ladies and handsome men could be seen everywhere as they each advertised different products. Perfume, toys, clothing, you name it, they had it all. Hum? Stopping, I looked at a large fluorescent sign. Less than less than antique shop greater than greater than antique shop. I wonder if they have anything interesting here. Deling. Deling. Opening the door, the bells on the door lightly tolled. Instantly a heavy scent of wood hit my nostrils reminding me of my grandparents' house back in my previous world. It smelled funky. Welcome, greeting me was an old man with a large gray beard and a set of white hair. Nodding in his direction I looked around. Instantly my interest was piqued. Everything in here were things that I used to use back on earth. Since this was the year 2055, everything was far more advanced to the things I was used to back on earth, meaning that what I used to use was considered ancient in this day and age. In the corner of the room, I could see magazines and newspapers, consoles, and other things that I used to use. Seeing all of these things around the room caused me to feel a bit of nostalgia. Oh. As I was looking around a certain item instantly caught my attention. Picking it up a wide smile appeared on my face. Great choice. One of my personal favorites, appearing behind me the shop owner stroked his beard a couple of times as he looked at the item in my hand. How much is this? MHH. Considering that the company that makes that device is no longer around I would say 500 U. 500 U. Looking at the MP3 in my hand, a conflicted look appeared on my face. I mean paying 500 U for an MP3 in this day and age wasn't something that any sane person would do. Dot, but I couldn't help but be tempted. This was especially so when I noticed that it came with its own wired earphones. You heard me right. Wired earphones. Before I reincarnated, my world was already starting to transition from wired earphones to wireless earbuds. To be honest I tried wireless earbuds before but they weren't my thing. As I loved listening to music to pass time, I bought myself some wireless earbuds in this world but it just wasn't the same. Alright, I'll buy it, great choice, smiling from ear to ear, the shopkeeper immediately went to the register and swiped my card. Soon after the transaction ended, I left the shop. Opening my new MP3, I was surprised with the fact that it already had its own playlist on it. Scrolling through the numerous songs, I stopped on one and put on my earbuds. Equals 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 seven nation army the white stripes. 0 hundred play button, 352 plus volume. Ignoring the weird stares coming in my direction, I happily went back to the academy listening to my new MP3. Chapter 44 Inside a dark and damp room, a young individual kneeled on one leg on the floor. Matriarch the preparations are complete, the bait has been thrown. Lifting his head up, a red throne met his sight. Besides the red throne, two large ferocious dog-like creatures sat on the ground. Their eyes were of a deep shade of red, and their teeth were extremely sharp causing his blood to freeze. Sitting neatly on the red thorny throne, was a gorgeous woman. She was wearing a gorgeous long red dress, whose hem was beautified with marvelous drawings and patterns. Her dress was a deep shade of red and showed off her exquisite body. Her black hair gently fell all the way from her shoulders to her waist. Her red, succulent lips had a cold smile as she tapped the armchair of her throne. 
Good, her enchanting voice that sounded crisp and pleasant traveled to the young individual's ears causing him to fall into a slight daze. Looking at her, the young individual couldn't help but swallow a mouthful of saliva as he tried his best to calm his raging heart. His eyesight slightly lingered on her gorgeous gown that emphasized her perfect figure. Her sexy figure was extremely charming that it could make any man's heart pound harder. Her bare feet seemingly made of porcelain and flawless further increased her sexiness. However if not for the two black horns on her head he would have mistaken her for a human. Realizing that he had been staring for too long, the young individual forcefully looked down on the ground as cold sweat dripped from his back. Though he couldn't deny that the figure before him was extremely enchanting, if by chance he got on the wrong side of her, death would be the best outcome. If it weren't for that idiot Everblood we wouldn't have needed to push our plans this far ahead. Pouting slightly, the demoness calmly petted the two dogs before her. Soon silence enveloped the surroundings. Matriarch when should we initiate the plan? Breaking the silence the young youth spoke. Thinking for a bit, the matriarch looked at the boy before her before saying. Mhhh, let's take it slowly. Though Everblood failed we still have some time. You should first try to capture our target. As you wish matriarch, nodding his head, the young boy placed his left hand on his right peck and bowed. Good boy, smiling slightly, the matriarch looked at the young handsome boy before her. Elijah Turner, that was the name of the young boy before her. Though she was forced to make a pact with him due to certain circumstances, after having contracted with him for over a year she had taken a liking to him. Though he was not very talented, he was very obedient. Dot and she liked that a lot. Pausing slightly, the matriarch looked at the young boy as an overbearing pressure bore down on him causing his legs to slightly falter. Ah, but I do hope you won't fail me. We can't have another setback interfering with our big plan. You understood, struggling to move or speak, it took the boy all his willpower to agree with the matriarch. Coo coo coo, what a cute little boy, laughing lightly, the pressure soon disappeared and the young boy was finally able to move freely. Here, throwing a purple fruit at the boy who was panting heavily, the matriarch amusingly looked at him who was desperately reaching for the fruit. T thank you, excitedly grabbing the fruit, the boy instantly devoured it. Ah, soon black veins emerged all over his body, as he squirmed on the ground, his muscles spasmed intensely and his nails grew longer and then returned to normal. Demon fruit that was the name of the fruit that Elijah had just consumed. Because he was not very talented, in order for him to not expose his identity, he had to consume the demon fruit. The demon fruit, previously known as the world fruit, was a fruit harvested from the world tree which used to belong to the elves. After having conquered the elves' home planet, the demons successfully managed to corrupt the world tree turning it into the demon tree which bore fruit to the demon fruits. Upon consumption, the demon fruit allowed lower-ranked demons' bloodlines to become purer. That alone went to show how important the fruit was for the demons. With it, the demon clans managed to drastically increase their strength. Another function that the demon fruit had was that it allowed contracted humans, villains, to have a boost in talent. Moreover, it also strengthened the bond between the parties. If someone like Elijah whose talent was on the lower end of the spectrum consumed the fruit, then his appearance not only improved but also didn't change like it was supposed to after having made the contract. Because of the high demand and limited supply, the demon fruit was extremely sought after by the demons. The fact that they were giving it to Elijah went to show how important his mission was. All right you may go, thank you, bowing once again, the young boy left the room. Soon after he left, a shadow materialized beside the matriarch. Because it was dark, its features were hidden preventing anyone but the matriarch from seeing how it looked like. Are you sure it's okay to let him do the mission alone? Smiling lightly, the matriarch looked at where the young boy was and said. Well if he isn't capable of this much, he's better off dead, though it would be a problem if he died after having invested so much in him. Rip opening the large box that had arrived early in the morning, I excitedly looked through the contents. As expected of Melissa, the box was filled with potions. Only three days had passed since I requested Melissa to make me the potions, and yet in that short amount of time, she managed to fulfill my request and sent me all of the potions I commissioned her to make for me. Honestly, I was impressed. Though what was less impressive was the fact that I had to fork out a total of 6 million yu just for the raw materials alone. But looking at the high quality potions in the box, the pain I felt from spending so much money instantly disappeared. Soon, I started taking out all of the potions from the box. 16. Mana Recovery Potions 8. Strength Enhancement Potions 8. Stamina Recovery Potions 9. Counting all the potions to make sure nothing was missing, I organized the potions in different batches, each on the type of potions they were. Because they were all transparent and only had labels with Melissa's writing if I didn't sort them out I could potentially consume the wrong one. Well, yes I did in fact expect potions to have all different types of colors, but I was wrong. Reality was harsh and all potions looked like water, moreover, they came inside of test tubes and not some fancy flask like in games. Scam I say. After sorting out the potions and making sure nothing was missing, I stood up and prepared to attend classes. Though I couldn't wait to try a potion right now, I could only hold my impulse back and go to class. When taking a potion, if one wasn't focusing enough, then they might hurt themselves. 
That's why it was better for me to consume them once I had time to spare. Hum. What am I missing? Looking around the room, I noticed my MP3 on my desk and immediately took it with me. These past few days I had cemented my position as the weirdo in the class. Not only did the way I trained look ridiculous to everyone in the class, including teachers, but I also had no friends. A month in, and everyone in the class had pretty much formed their own clique or had at least one friend, yet I didn't even have a person to talk to let alone call an acquaintance. I was a total anti-social loner in the eyes of everyone in my class. To make matters worse, now that I was using an ancient-looking device accompanied by wired earphones, which had gone extinct since three decades ago, my position as the class weirdo became as stable as Mount Tai. Honestly, I wasn't too sure how to feel about this. To me, I looked absolutely normal, but well. I couldn't just go to them and tell them I reincarnated into a novel and back in my previous world this was normal, could I? Sighing at my miserable life, I took the keys and made my way to the door. Click. Closing the door to my room, I put my earphones on and hurried my steps. Couldn't afford to be late, else I could kiss graduating goodbye. Today's class lecture had ended later than usual, and after being subjected to Donna's cold treatment I was finally able to free myself from class. Though I could barely feel my legs, I still had to drag my body to my elective class. After the elective was over, I had to do my daily workout. Just thinking about that made me depressed. If I knew this would happen, I would have asked Melissa to make more, stamina enhancement, potions. My shoes had already started wearing out from how much I was overworking myself. In any case, I was currently heading to the elective clubroom. Perhaps because I tended to have bad luck when meeting the main characters, but. Amanda was walking a few meters ahead of me. Being behind her I could instantly catch a whiff of her rose-like scent. It was a bit of an awkward walk as we were heading in the same direction without speaking to each other. From another person's point of view, it would have looked like I was stalking her. I mean she was stunning. Fortunately, we soon arrived inside the classroom and sat in the same seats as we did in the previous class. By the time we arrived, Elijah Turner, the club president, was already standing on the podium going through some papers. Carefully flipping the pages, he seemed to be organizing today's lecture notes. Not long after, the room was filled to the brim as the rest of the students entered the class. However contrary to the previous class where everyone sat wherever they wanted, today's class was separated into three different groups, first, second and third years. It seems like the relationship between juniors and seniors was starting to get progressively sour with each passing day. I thought as I looked at how the first years were being avoided by the senior years. At eight on the dot, Elijah began his lecture. Good afternoon, everyone. It seems like a lot of you ha. As he talked, most of the stuff coming from his mouth went into one ear and left from the other. I couldn't be bothered to pay attention to his idle chatter. Fortunately, I had learned my lesson and held my yawn back, though the fact that tears started streaming from my cheeks after ten minutes didn't help me hide the fact that I wanted to yawn. Today we will talk about the plant kingdom. As most of you know, once mana entered our planet not only did we and beasts evolve but plants did too. Essentially all living beings on this planet started to evolve. Though most plants have no sentience don't look down on plants as some of them evolved into terrifying things that even SS-ranked heroes would want to avoid at all costs. For example, if we look at some of the most powerful plants out there, the tree ants, they had evolved from regular trees to a ranked monsters that when in groups could cause trouble to some of the most experienced heroes out there. This goes to. Though I knew most of the stuff I still paid attention to it as it wasn't as detailed as the information that Elijah was teaching. Have you guys understood? Looking around the class, Elijah repeatedly asked questions to every student to make sure they were paying attention. Looking around and seeing that everyone nodded, Elijah smiled in satisfaction and said. All right then, I guess it's time we call it quits for today. The lecture had lasted a total of one hour. Unexpectedly, there was a lot to learn like the weakness of some plants, which areas to avoid, and the difference between physical plants and non-physical plants, e.g. ones that attack directly and the ones that used poison. I learned in detail about things I had neglected to explain in my novel, all the while I watched cute female students throwing flirtatious glances at Elijah. Rejoicing at the fact that I no longer had to listen to him, I prepared to leave the class but before I could leave I heard his voice addressing the whole class. If anyone is interested since today is our first lecture I will be hosting an after party, it'll be great if you can come. A. This wasn't in the novel there was no such thing as an after party in the novel at this point in time. Hum. Amanda is not rejecting it. Amanda who was usually indifferent to everything nodded at Elijah and verbally confirmed her participation. What's going on? Wasn't she supposed to be indifferent to everything? What happened? As I was looking at Amanda with a stupefied look, I didn't notice that two eyes were sharply looking in my direction. By the time I noticed I found Elijah standing two meters away from me smiling. Student are you interested in joining us? Dot air, sure? Great, we will be leaving in an hour so make sure you go back to your dorm and get ready. Smiling, Elijah turned around and talked to the other students. To be honest I agreed to join them on an impulse as I was starting to get worried for Amanda. A scenario that had never happened in the novel was starting right now. I have a feeling that as of today my peaceful low-key life was going to take a turn for the worst. Chapter 45 After finishing her last class, Food Exploration, 
Amanda went back to her room. Along the way, people would try to strike a conversation with her, but she promptly ignored them. Arriving in her room, the first thing she did was sit on her sofa and pick up a book. Since she had about an hour to pass, in order to pass time, she decided to do the only thing she could think of. Read a book. Only when reading a book did she feel a sense of belonging. Amanda's family circumstances were a bit special her father, Edward Stern, guild master of the Demon Hunter Guild and hero ranked 25, Frost of Remorse, was rarely home. Her real mother left when she was two, she couldn't handle all the pressure that came from being the wife of such an important figure. The only memory Amanda had of her was her lonely silhouette walking down a long road as heavy rain poured from the sky. That was the day she left their home. Amanda wanted to reach out for her, but not once did the figure ever turn back to look at her. That memory was forever etched deep inside of the young Amanda. Because of that, ever since she was two, she was raised by her father and her nanny. That being said, due to the nature of her father's work, he would rarely be able to come back on time to spend time with her. Whenever he did have time, Amanda remembered him rubbing her head with his large warm hand. Too bad those moments only lasted a couple of seconds. In the end, the person that raised her was her nanny. She would often tell her stories and fairy tales of princesses getting kidnapped to later get saved by a charming white prince. She too wanted to be a princess, back then, Amanda didn't really understand what princesses went through when they get kidnapped. But later on in her life, she did. The first time she was kidnapped she was seven years old. At the time she only remembered hearing voices. Her vision was obstructed. Tight rope tangled both her arms and legs. She was scared. A large gag was placed in her mouth preventing her from screaming. Fortunately, her father came and saved her. Then it happened again. And again, and again slowly, Amanda found herself losing her emotions. Her natural childish smile disappeared the more she got kidnapped. She was slowly maturing. However, she was still able to smile when her nanny narrated fairy tales to her. Those were the only times she felt safe and at peace. Sucked in another world. Almost as if escaping reality. That was until she was eleven. That was the age at which her nanny passed away, ridding of the last warmth in her heart. Since then, Amanda has never been able to smile. Even when kidnapped, she felt nothing. Everything around her became black and white. Slowly the expectations she had of the people around her vanished. I won't get angry, I won't be sad, I won't expect anything from anyone. Dot was what she repeatedly told herself as she shut herself in a box. It was from that point on that she decided not to form any relationships that weren't necessary. Even if they had the best interest for her, even if they treated her well, her heart was unmovable. Closing down the book she was reading, Amanda stood up and looked at the reflection in the mirror. Her long black hair that was no longer held by a pin, gently fell on her shoulders reaching all the way to her waist. Her deep phoenix-like eyes had a cold indifference to them that made people feel like she was a holy existence that was unreachable for regular people. Her appearance was so exquisite that it could move anyone's hearth regardless of their gender, but it also gave people a gloomy feeling. Placing her fingers on the edge of her lips, she lightly pulled the edges of her mouth in the form of a smile. Letting go, the edges of her mouth quickly reverted to their regular aloof position. She repeated this a couple more times, but, no matter how much she tried, she couldn't smile. Walking towards her closet, Amanda took a beautiful black dress with finely decorated silver patterns. Although she usually disliked attending parties, Amanda chose to attend this one. That was because back in the first lecture she received a mysterious box from the club president, Elijah Turner. At first, she thought nothing of it as she was used to these kinds of things, but, once she opened the box she was shocked. Inside the box was a picture of her mom. She looked almost identical to her, and if not for the wrinkles at the edge of her eyes, people could have easily mistaken her for her sister. Though she barely had any memories of her mother, Amanda couldn't stop herself from wanting to know more about the whereabouts of her mother. Dot she wanted to know why she had abandoned her and never visited in all the years since she had left. Since Elijah was the one that had provided her with the picture, Amanda had no choice but to look for him, and thus decided to attend the party. Wearing the beautiful dress and looking at herself in the mirror for a couple of seconds, Amanda took a small black purse and headed out. Click. Closing the door behind her, Amanda went towards the appointed location with a mind full of questions. Hum, should I wear a suit or normal clothes? Right now I was torn on what to wear to the after party. As I never attended these kinds of events before, I wasn't too sure about what to wear. A suit or casual clothes? Uck. Honestly, if it wasn't because this situation caught me off guard I wouldn't have chosen to attend this kind of event. After a while, I decided to do a bit of both. I wore a white iron t-shirt accompanied by blue jeans. Looking at myself in the mirror, I couldn't help but nod in satisfaction. After having transmigrated to this world for over a month, my originally skinny body had started to bulk up. Though my body wasn't sculpted like a god, I had a fairly good body. My short black hair which was nicely styled, accompanied by the deep blue eyes made me nod in satisfaction. I looked fairly handsome. After looking at myself a couple of more times, I looked at the time and found that I only had 10 minutes left before the meeting time. As I was rushing to the door, my footsteps halted and my eyesight landed in the corner of my room where a black sword rested against the wall. 
After pondering for a bit, I took the black sword and placed it in my dimensional bracelet. I hope the situation doesn't get to the point where I have to use my sword. Though I said this, I already started preparing myself for the worse. The situation was already starting to get out of my control, and right now, for the first time, I was going into a situation without any knowledge of what was to come. Click. Taking my room keys and turning off the lights, I left my room. Cheers. Inside of a spacious luxurious room, a flock of students could be seen drinking and laughing. The interior of the room was very well decorated with fancy paintings scattered all over the room. Large white sofas with fine golden patterns on the sides sat in the middle of the room. Large wooden tables that were filled with food and beverages stood in the corner of the room. The location we were currently at was a rather well-known restaurant called La Ferrat. It was a fairly luxurious restaurant with celebrities often showing up here. Due to its popularity, it was fairly obvious that this place was expensive and somehow Elijah had managed to book a whole room just for the gathering. This pretty much impressed everyone that came as their eyes were shining stars, especially the girls. Twirling the cup of wine in my hand, I lightly smelled the wine. It had a fruity yet overbearing smell that made my nose twitch a couple of times. Just how I like it, though it may seem like this wine was one that I took from the table, in fact, it wasn't. The wine I was currently tasting was one that I brought with me. It's not that I disliked the wine here, but there was a high chance all the foods and drinks in the part were drugged beforehand. Though I was being somewhat paranoid, it was better to be safe than sorry. The reason why I was drinking it was so that I could blend with the crowd. If I didn't drink it, in the event that there was an ambush, there was a high chance I would be among the first who were targeted. Taking a small sip of the wine, I smacked my lips a couple of times before looking at my surroundings. Though the atmosphere was calm and everyone seemed to be enjoying themselves, I couldn't help but feel tense. There was this ominous vibe shrouding the whole venue. Something was definitely going to happen today, and it wasn't going to be something good. In the middle of the hall, Elijah, who wore an elegant white suit, was currently being flooded by multiple girls at a time. They were pushing and shoving each other aside to get a chance to talk to him. Elijah who was being surrounded and harassed by the girls kept a gentle smile on his face throughout the whole time. Besides him, a couple of boys were looking at him with envious and jealous eyes, but that was in the minority, as most of the boys were busy admiring a different scene. Standing on the balcony, Amanda, who looked like a goddess that had just descended on the world, was currently looking at the moon with a glass of wine in her hand. The gentle moonlight enveloped her perfect figure, creating this sort of picture-like scene. A couple of boys tried approaching her, but once they noticed that they were being ignored they could only helplessly go back to the party in defeat. Seeing this scene, my lips slightly curled and I helplessly shook my head, boys will be boys. Walking to the balcony, where Amanda was standing, I could hear faint whispers coming in my direction. Here goes the fifth one. How long will you give it? I say five seconds, no, I say ten inches since my stats had improved, so did my hearing. Listening to their whispers, my eyes couldn't help but roll. Just how much time did they have on their hands? Opening the door to the balcony, I slowly walked to the edge of the balcony and stood next to Amanda. Lifting my head up I looked at the moon. Though I did not want to interact with her nor any of the main characters, I couldn't help but do so this time. If something were to happen to her, then chances were that the storyline was going to change and all the advantages I had would simply crumble overnight. Simply put I couldn't afford that. Thus I decided to expose myself and warn her about the upcoming danger. Taking a sip of my wine, without glancing at Amanda, I lightly said. You should be careful tonight. As if she didn't hear me, Amanda kept staring at the moonlight. Seeing her react like that I didn't panic nor express my displeasure as I already knew her character. Though she was pretending to be indifferent, she definitely heard me loud and clear. It's just that she didn't show it on her face. Slightly smiling I said one last thing before walking back to the party. Something might happen tonight, and you might be the target, no, you're most likely the target. Finally turning her head to the side, Amanda saw my figure leaving the balcony. Seeing my figure leave, her brows knit for a split second before relaxing. Soon after, almost as if nothing happened, she started looking at the moon again. Turning my head and seeing that, I lightly smiled before heading back to my previous spot. Though it seemed like she didn't take my warning seriously, I in fact knew that she had upped her guard. Having been in these types of situations since a very young age, she knew that even if this was just a small prank, there was a chance that the warning was real. For her, even if it was a prank, it was better to be prepared than unprepared. In the off chance that what I had said turned out to be true, she could avoid being kidnapped again. Chapter 46 Clink, 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 may I have everyone's attention please. Tapping on the wine glass in his hands, Elijah gathered everyone's attention. Standing elegantly in the middle of the hall, Elijah made sure that everyone was looking at him before continuing. First of all, I would like to thank all of you that decided to attend the gathering. Although our elective could be considered on the smaller side compared to other electives, we here are like a family. Making eye contact with everyone in the room, Elijah Mood turned a little bit serious as he spoke. I have recently been made aware of the conflicts happening between the juniors and us seniors, and it honestly pains me to see this. I may not be able to change this, but I sincerely hope that in our elective this prejudice and conflict does not appear. Pausing slightly, and looking at everyone in the room, 
Elijah raised his glass and said. This is more than just an elective. This is a family. At first, everyone was quiet. Turning to look at each other a myriad of expressions could be seen from certain individuals' faces. They wanted to rebuke but. They dared not to. With Elijah's current influence, his words were law. Refusing him was like signing a death warrant. Clap. Breaking the awkward and tense silence was the sound of a clap. 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 Soon someone else started clapping, and like a chain reaction, everyone followed along and started clapping. I understand, I will follow the president's order. We love you, president. I love you, president. Cheers resounded across the hall as both the male and female students cheered for Elijah. Smiling, Elijah took a big gulp of the wine and once again lifted the cup in the air. It is with great honor and pride that I welcome you to our elective, food exploration. Thank you. Food exploration. Best elective. Though everyone cheered, two individuals didn't. One retained an indifferent face throughout the whole ordeal while the other cringed repeatedly. Of course, this didn't escape Elijah's eyes, as his eyes narrowed for a split second before returning back to normal as if nothing happened. Unbothered by the fact that Elijah probably noticed my behavior, I nonchalantly sat on a sofa and enjoyed my wine. The fact that he managed to say those words without cringing was worthy of my admiration. For all I knew, Elijah cared nothing for the conflicts within the academy. In fact, he was probably rejoicing at the fact that there were conflicts within the academy. Most notably at the fact that some of the attention was diverted away from him, allowing him to act as he pleased. Looking at the glass of wine in my hand I frowned. Though I usually disliked alcohol, due to previous trauma, it wasn't a problem anymore. Excluding the fact that the wine wasn't that strong, with my new physique only alcohol higher than 70% could affect me. Anything lower than that didn't bother me. Sort of ruined the pleasure of alcohol, but oh well, it's not like I needed alcohol in my life again. After nearly finishing half of the wine that I had brought with me which I so conveniently hid inside of my bracelet, I felt my bladder bloating. Walking up to a waiter I asked, excuse me where's the bathroom? Pointing towards the entrance of the room, the waiter said. Turn right over there and after you walk a couple of meters you should see a bathroom sign. Thank you, thanking the waiter and following his instruction, I headed to the bathroom. A man's gotta do what a man gotta do, sitting on the sofa. Amanda was lost in her own thoughts. Occasionally she would glance to her right where a male student sat he looked completely out of place with his clothes that did not suit the atmosphere. He had short black hair and blue ocean-like eyes. His features that were devoid of any pimples or freckles looked clean and pleasant. Though he could have been considered handsome, he was only average if compared to the likes of Jin and Kevin. Looking at him, Amanda couldn't help but look at him in confusion. He was currently sitting on a sofa sipping on some wine looking extremely bored. No one approached him, nor did he approach anyone and he seemed to enjoy the solitude as he would occasionally mumble to himself. Dot was what he said true. The reason why Amanda was paying so much attention to him was because that very same student had approached her earlier. It was when she was on the balcony looking at the moon lost in her own thoughts. It was odd. She had a vague recollection of him, as he was one of the more famous students in her class. Not in a good way though. The weirdo was what they called him. She wasn't sure about the details, but he was regarded by most of the students as a weirdo that they should avoid at all costs. Thinking about her interactions with him, Amanda couldn't agree more. He was a weirdo. Usually, the male students would come towards her and try all ways to get her attention. Yet, he only told her two things before leaving. What was even more confusing were the things that he said to her. You should be careful tonight. And, something might happen tonight, and you might be the target, no, you're most likely the target. If this was a new trick to try to get her attention, he had succeeded. She didn't really put his warning to heart, but she definitely started paying more attention to her surroundings. Having been in these sorts of situations since young, her temperament became cautious. If anything remotely suspicious happened she would immediately raise her guard to the maximum. Scanning the hall everything seemed normal, and apart from a few people already getting drunk, there was nothing odd about that. Hum. Drunk? Weren't wines the only thing that were served here? How could people get drunk off of wine? Instantly Amanda knew that something was wrong. Hiding her hand behind her back, she prepared to summon her bow in case something dangerous happened. Thud. 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 One after another students started falling on the ground. Amanda instinctively tried to summon her bow but a wave of vertigo caused her to lose her bearing. Stumbling around, she tried her best to support herself against a pillar. Looking around, every student fell on the ground unconscious. Damn it. Gnashing her teeth, Amanda tried her best to combat the drug effects. Although the drug was strong, she still did not lose consciousness. It partly had to do with the fact that she was one of the strongest people in the room and her strong mentality. Dot but she didn't know how long she could remain conscious for. Time was ticking and she could only try her best to not fall for whatever plot someone was brewing. Looking around she tried to look for the boy that had warned her beforehand. Dot but it was to no avail as he was missing. Is he the mastermind behind this? Thought Amanda as she looked for any traces of him. It wasn't wrong of her to suspect him as he just suddenly disappeared as soon as everyone started falling on the ground. To call this not suspicious would be a lie. Maybe he was the type of person that loved to tease his prey? 
But she quickly denied the possibility. Although he was weird, she could tell he wasn't the culprit. Although Amanda didn't like to talk much and always seemed to be absorbed in her books, she was always observing. It was something she developed over the years to get a better read on who had malicious intentions against her. Their posture, their expressions, their temperament, she could pretty much determine if someone had any ill will or was wearing a mask to hide their true selves by observing those things. Although he was weird, she could tell at first glance he meant no harm. Cough. Cough. K.H. Amanda. Coughing and stumbling on the ground, Elijah walked towards Amanda. Looking at Elijah who seemed to be in distress Amanda took a few steps back. Huff. 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 Dropping on one knee, Elijah panted heavily. K.H. What's happening? Amanda who although was also suffering, tried her best to restrain herself from helping Elijah. Her instincts told her not to. Dot yet she couldn't help but take a step towards his direction. He was the only key she had to find her mother. Dot she needed closure. Although she was struggling, Amanda was slowly getting used to the effects of the drug. Soon her mind regained some clarity. Arriving a few meters before Elijah, Amanda extended her hand in his direction. Then Khu, reaching with his right hand, Elijah tried to grab Amanda's hand. Dot but before he could fully touch her, she smacked his hand away. Smack. Yo you, shocked Elijah looked at Amanda who was glaring at him. Drop the act, wh are you talking about? You think you can fool me when the entire time you had a smirk on your face? Taken aback, Elijah touched his face. Coo coo coo, trembling, Elijah's smile deepened as he started laughing. How careless of me, I just couldn't contain my excitement. Standing up, Elijah exaggeratively facepalmed, ah, I'm sorry. I just couldn't hold myself after imagining myself sharing some alone time with you, one of the three great beauties of the first years. Voom. Summoning her bow, Amanda instantly drew it. Oh my, aren't we a little too hasty? Raising his hands in surrender, Elijah smirked as he walked in Amanda's direction. Whoosh. 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 As soon as Elijah took a step in her direction, without batting an eye, Amanda released three arrows in successions. Suddenly three white streaks of light appeared before Elijah as the arrows whistled through the air. Thump. 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 Oh wow that's some great archery. Looking behind him, Elijah whistled in admiration as he looked at the three arrows that pierced the wall deeply. Dot too bad you missed. Looking at Amanda who was on the floor panting heavily, Elijah had a delighted smile on his face. A couple of minutes wasn't enough to combat the drug that he had carefully prepared beforehand. Walking slowly, Elijah savored Amanda's struggling expression. Yes. This is what I wanted. Finally, the oh so indifferent Amanda has finally shown me a different expression. Wh it have you done to me? Gritting her teeth, Amanda glared at Elijah who was only a few steps away from her. Oh dear, don't show me such face. Kneeling on one leg and holding Amanda by her chin, Elijah's expression twisted savagely. Now, now, we wouldn't want our dear Amanda showing such a face now would we? Grabbing onto her face, Elijah looked at her features in admiration. If not the strict orders I received from Mother Matriarch I would have already devoured you. Mother Matriarch? Oops, it seems like I spoke too much. Lightly knocking on his head, Elijah had a silly expression on his face. Let's just say that you're going to be thanking me soon. Pooh. Spitting on Elijah's face, Amanda defiantly looked at him. Fuck off. Y-O-U-Y-O-U, trembling, Elijah touched his cheek where Amanda spat. Looking at his finger which was covered in saliva, Elijah's face twisted menacingly as his hand grabbed her neck. How? How dare you spit on my face? His strong voice reverberated across the hall as he tightened the grip around Amanda's neck. Unlike you, I wasn't born as beautiful as the rest. I was insulted, jeered at, and bullied for my appearance. This world's hierarchy is dictated by two things, beauty and talent. Unlike you who had both, I had none. I was bullied and harassed throughout my whole childhood. Even my parents forsake me for my younger siblings who had better appearances than me. Gripping on Amanda's neck tighter, Elijah pulled her face closer to his. Just when I was about to end my life, Mother Matriarch came and saved me. She gave me talent, power, and my current appearance. Glaring with all his might, Elijah's voice kept rising. If not for her I would be nothing. KHH, lessening the grip on Amanda's neck, Elijah looked at her and said. Thus, no matter how much you struggle I will stop at nothing to complete her task. Sigh startling both Amanda and Elijah, a loud sigh resounded across the hall. Soon a pale youth with deep blue eyes walked into the hall. His eyes slightly paused on Elijah before looking at Amanda who was struggling with all her might. With an annoyed look, he scratched his head and said. I warned you didn't I? Chapter 47, I warned you didn't I? Honestly, though I expected something to happen I didn't expect it to happen right after I returned from my toilet trip. It felt as if I missed out on all of the fun, it's you? Releasing Amanda, Elijah stood up and looked at me who had just come back from the bathroom. Cuh. Huff. Huff. Looking at Amanda who was gripping her neck heavily gulping for air I pretty much got the gist of what was happening. The event had already started, rank 1750 Rendover. Hum. Yes. 
Turning my attention back to Elijah who had just called me, I instantly noticed his relaxed attitude. The way he was looking at me irked me, but I didn't say anything. Judging from the pressure he was releasing he was at least less than D to rank if not less than D greater than rank. But fortunately for me, thanks to all the training I did, the pressure wasn't weighing down on me much. The fact that he was primarily focused on Amanda also helped me. Judging from how relaxed he seemed, it looked like he didn't see me as a threat. Perfect, smirking to myself, I started to devise a plan. Well, since he was looking down on me, I may as well capitalize on his carelessness. You see. Dot one of the greatest things about keeping a low profile was that no one knew what you were truly capable of. This especially worked in my favor as that Kiki style was primarily a one hit one kill sword art. All I needed was one clean hit and he was done for. The fact that I kept a low profile and chose not to expose my strength helped me by an opening. In fact, even though I said all of this, I wasn't really confident even if I caught him by surprise. Although there was a chance I could kill him if I was really lucky, those chances were slim. It just wasn't easy to bridge the gap between F and D ranks. Though I practiced a peerless 5 star manual technique, I would at most be able to graze him if I confronted him directly, he was just that much better than me. Each rank was fundamentally different from the other. Each rank increase was like an increase in strength by a factor greater than 2. Bridging one rank was already hard for me, too? Almost impossible. If not for his arrogance, those chances would have never been higher than zero. Knowing this, I had prepared beforehand. Having learned my lesson since the dungeon incident, I devised a little safe plan for me in case the situation turned serious. Before coming to the party, I messaged Thomas and asked him for a favor. Since I more or less knew something was going to happen at the party, I predicted that Elijah was going to install some sort of dimensional space which prevented any outside interference. A dimensional space was a pocket dimension separate from the outside world. Everything that happened inside of the dimension was separate from the real world preventing anyone from noticing that something was wrong. It created an illusion to people making it seem that everything was normal, when in fact something else was going on inside. No sound or transmissions could be leaked preventing people from calling for backup. It was the perfect device to hide a crime. Knowing this, when I messaged Thomas, I specifically told him that if by chance in the next four hours my phone suddenly lost signal, he was to send an encrypted message to Alexander Stern, Amanda's father as well as the authorities. In the message, I directly wrote that a villain was attacking the specific location and many students were in danger, I also emphasized that Amanda was one of the said students. Though the plan was not foolproof, because I had asked Thomas, who was a high-ranking member of the black market to send the message, chances were that Alexander Stern and the authorities would receive it. Dot now all I had to do was stall for time. Looking around and seeing that everyone was on the floor passed out, I knew that I didn't have much time. Though this may have been a sleeping drug, it could have also been an extremely strong poison. Though I didn't know what was in their system, I knew it wasn't good for them. Seeing that the situation was unfavorable, I knew I had to do something. Looking at my skill bar, I instantly used my new and only skill. Monarch's indifference. Soon, everything around me started to change. The hall, the people, the furniture, everything in my eyes slowly changed. Everything no longer looked like what it was before. Slowly, everything around me started resembling chess pieces. The hall turned into a three-dimensional space with pawns all over the floor. My heartbeat which was beating unevenly calmed down. Following my heartbeat, my breathing became even and I felt all my emotions leaving my body. I no longer cared for Amanda. I no longer cared for everyone in the hall. I no longer cared about Elijah. I only had one goal. Move the chess pieces accordingly. W what's happening? Wobbling around the hall, Ren's legs staggered. Leaning against the wall, Ren heavily panted for air. He. Dot and here I was wondering why you weren't affected by the drug. Smirking, Elijah amusingly looked at Ren who was staggering all over the place like a drunk person. It seems like you're somewhat immune to the drug. Pity that in the end because you are so weak the drug still affected you. Looking at Elijah with wide eyes, Ren dumbly said, D drug? Ah, sorry but I don't have much time to talk with someone as insignificant as you. Walking towards Ren's direction, Elijah's eyes were full of malice. You see. I have bone to pick with you, khh, grabbing Ren by the hair, Elijah coldly looked at him. Multiple times in my class you repeatedly yawned and acted bored, dot was it fun? Slap. Slapping Ren in the face until a red mark appeared on his face, Elijah raised his hand again. Slap. Someone who is ranked 1750 should sit quietly and listen to the lecture obediently. Slap. Yet. Dot you actually dared to provoke me, slap. Even now. Just as I was about to have my fun with Amanda you came in and ruined the mood. Slap. Blame your lack of tact for the fact that you will die after being tortured. Slapping Ren's face continuously, his pale face slowly turned purple as his lips started to become swollen. Staring at the scene in the distance, Amanda barely managed to sit up straight. Dot was he all talk? Though she knew he was ranked 1750, ever since he had warned her, Amanda thought that maybe he was hiding his strength. Moreover, the way he showed up looking all fine told her that he was hiding his strength, but it seems like it was all her misconception. 
Just as she was about to gather all her remaining energy to shoot Elijah, she felt two cold emotionless eyes staring at her. Looking up, she could see Ren's eyes emotionlessly looking at her. Though he was being slapped continuously by Elijah, his eyes never wavered. They were the eyes of a predator that was looking for the right time to strike. Stopping whatever she was doing, Amanda looked back at him. Dot how could he still be so calm? Though he was being tortured by Elijah, and his expression twisted in pain, his eyes which were devoid of any emotion were staring at her almost as if telling her, not yet. Staring into his eyes, Amanda clenched her teeth and quietly gathered all the mana in the surroundings. Though she didn't know what he was planning, she had this inexplicable feeling that only if she listened to him would she be able to get out of this predicament. Seeing that Amanda was slowly accumulating the mana into her bow, Ren smirked at Elijah who was smacking him. Oh? You're being slapped senseless and yet you still have the guts to smile? Slap. As soon as the slap landed on Ren's face, his head twisted to the side due to the enormous force of the slap. Slap. Slapping the other side, Ren's face twisted to the other side doing a complete 180. Since you asked for it, I will gladly pick up the pace. Slap. 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 For the next five minutes, the loud sounds of slaps reverberated across the hall. Soon, Elijah stopped as he looked down. Beneath him, Ren's battered face could be seen bleeding all over the floor. His face was so swollen that his eyes were barely visible. Let's end this, seeing that Ren was no longer responsive, Elijah prepared to go for the kill. Though he was sure that no one was going to interfere for the next two hours, he still needed to finish the mission. Toying with the prey should come later. Raising his hand, his nails increased in length becoming extremely sharp at the tips. Goodbye, whoosh. Just as he was about pierce Ren in the neck, he heard a whistling sound coming from behind him. Turning his head abruptly, he saw a large silver light quickly heading in his direction. It was so fast that the air around it split apart. Staring at the incoming arrow, Elijah's pupils dilated and he gathered all of the mana he had in the form of a shield. This all happened in a matter of seconds boom. Soon, a large explosion reverberated across the hall as dust and debris swept the place. The windows around the hall completely shattered and cracks could vividly be seen around the walls of the hall. As soon as the dust cleared, the tattered figure of Elijah could be seen. His elegant figure from before was no longer seen, as his hair and clothes were a mess. Black veins slowly started appearing on his face as they wiggled constantly. His muscles spasmed continuously and his body enlarged into a hideous-looking creature. Kua! Hastily touching his face, Elijah screamed. His eyes which were now a deep shade of red stared at Amanda who was helplessly lying down on the floor. H how de dare you! Screaming at the top of his lungs, Elijah moved towards Amanda. He was in a state of pure rage. Completely forgetting about his mission he headed towards Amanda preparing to kill her. However, before he could do that, his body stopped moving. No, it refused to move. Shuua! Spurt! Spitting a large amount of blood, Elijah looked below him where a black sword pierced his heart. It all happened so fast that he had no time to react. Turning around, he could see two emotionless eyes staring at him. He who so'd have been battered to the point of being unable to move was looking at him with eyes that seemed to look straight into his soul. Y-K-H-O-U? H-O-U? Checkmate, thud. Those were the last words Elijah heard before his body slumped on the ground lifeless. Gulp. Taking out a potion, Ren instantly drank it. Soon at a speed visible to the naked eye, all the bruises on his face disappeared. Stabbing Elijah's corpse a couple of times, Ren slowly walked in Amanda's direction. Right now she was looking at Ren in shock. Though she didn't see clearly, she managed to see the moment when he pierced Elijah in the hearth. Fast. Dot too fast. All she saw was Elijah's eyes staring at the sword stabbed in his body in disbelief. Looking at Ren who was walking in her direction, Amanda instinctively moved back, but as soon as she tried to lift her body she fell to the ground, she had no more energy left. Soon he was in front of her, his emotionless eyes looked down on her, she looked back, and the hall soon enveloped in silence. Forget what you saw, those were the last words she heard before she felt a tap on the back of her neck. Soon darkness enveloped her mind as she passed out on the ground. After making sure Amanda was knocked unconscious, Ren took four arrows from her quiver and walked back to where Elijah's corpse was. Spurt. 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 Stabbing each arrow in his body, Ren made sure they each stabbed exactly where his sword stabbed Elijah. After making sure there were no traces of what he had done left, Ren walked a bit further away from where Elijah's corpse was, fixed his clothes and hair, and forcefully knocked himself unconscious. Thud. As his eyes slowly lost consciousness and the effects of monarch's indifference wore off, a small smile appeared on his face. Not bad. Chapter 48 Spurt, M. Matriarch. Splurting black blood on the ground, inside of a dim light room, an enchanting figure clenched her heart. A black silhouette appeared next to the matriarch who had just splurted black blood on the ground and hastily helped her sit on her throne. Though her breath was weak, her presence remained majestic as the servant did not dare utter a single word. Gripping the armrest of her throne, the matriarch whose figure was now incomparably pale said. He failed. Crack. Crack. Tightening her grip on the armrest, 
cracks started appearing on the throne as a red glow started emanating from the matriarch's figure. Fortunately because he was much weaker than me, his death has only cost me a small internal injury. Hearing what the matriarch had said, the servant worriedly asked. How long do you need to recuperate? I should be healed in about a year's time. Turning her head to the servant that was next to her, she coldly ordered. Get someone to send me all of the information regarding the incident that Elijah was responsible for. Yes mother matriarch, nodding his head, the servant disappeared into the darkness. As soon as he disappeared the red hue around the matriarch increased many folds enveloping the whole room. Once I find out who was responsible for killing my pawn. Boom. The throne behind the matriarch suddenly pulverized as she stood up. With a distorted face and eyes that were dyed red in rage, she slowly spat. I will personally make sure they suffer a pain worse than death. Amanda's consciousness was awakened by a dazzling light coming through her eyelids, stimulating her pupils. Waking up in a large spacious room, Amanda blankly stared at the familiar ceiling she had been seeing for the past month. Lightly lifting her head, Amanda stared at her room. The room was large, and besides her, there was a massive bookshelf filled to the brim with books. A large desk stood in the right corner of the room. On it, a white desk lamp sat on the right corner of the desk with books neatly piled around it. The room had a nice woody, tranquil feeling around it that could calm anyone who was in it. The sunlight directly entered the room from the large windows around the room, brightening the surroundings. Before entering the academy, because of her outstanding results, she was asked by the academy how she wanted to design the room and this was the outcome. The tranquility and silence in the room calmed her mind. Dot ah. Touching her head, she felt a strong headache whenever she tried remembering what had happened the night prior. It felt as if her head was being split into two. The last thing she remembered was seeing two emotionless eyes staring at her. Recalling the young man that was responsible for killing Elijah, Amanda's head was filled with questions. Although she had never paid much attention to him, she still did observe him from time to time like all of her classmates. In fact, because he tended to do weird things, she more or less had an impression of him. In both elective and class, he looked like someone who was sloppy. He cared for no one around him and always seemed to be bored in class. Especially in the elective where he would forcefully try to pay attention to the lecture, though it always ended with him making strange faces. However, after the happenings of the party, her previous impression of him had completely shattered. Recalling his two eyes devoid of emotions that perfectly calculated the exact time to strike, Amanda felt a cold chill run down her spine. Even though she was indifferent to most things, she couldn't help but want to find out more about him. In one moment he was a sloppy good-for-nothing weirdo and in another a calculating cold-blooded killer. What was his true personality? Bam! Snapping Amanda out of her thoughts was the sound of the door opening as two stunning girls accompanied by two extremely handsome boys entered the room. Rushing next to Amanda, Emma worriedly looked at her as she patted her body all over to make sure she was okay. Amanda, I saw on the news about what had happened, dot are you okay? Hum, nodding her head slightly, she looked at the four individuals that had entered her room, Jin, Kevin, Melissa, and Emma. Though she didn't show it on her face, seeing that they had come to visit her, Amanda felt a little warmth in her heart. Interrupting Emma who was all over Amanda, Kevin spoke. I was extremely surprised when I received the news of what had happened, how did you manage to defeat a D-rank villain? A? Eh? Don't tell me you forgot? Here take a look. Seeing the confused look on Amanda's face, Emma took her phone out from her pocket. She then proceeded to turn on the holographic function and swipe towards Amanda. Soon a virtual newspaper article appeared before her. At 10.22 p.m. in Ashton City, D-rank villain who had infiltrated Top Human Academy, Locke, attempted to kill more than 50 students. An anonymous tip had alerted the authorities beforehand about the sudden attack, and upon arrival, the corpse of D-rank villain was found. The corpse of the villain had multiple arrow wounds all over its body. Upon investigation, all drinks and foods present in the venue had been drugged beforehand by a potent drug containing a strong sleeping agent. Currently, the venue owners of La Ferrat are under arrest on the suspicion of collusion with villains. Fortunately, thanks to the courageous efforts of one individual, this disaster was prevented. If not for the heroic feats of top student, Amanda Stern, this day would have turned into a tragic massacre. The motive behind the attack is still UNKN. Looking through the article, Amanda slowly and carefully read the article from top to bottom, not skipping a single detail. Was it his doing? She knew for a fact that she wasn't the person responsible for Elijah's death. Yet, from what she was reading in the article it seemed like she was the one who had killed him. The fact that she was passed out with her bow in her hand, coupled with the multiple arrows that belonged to her which were found on Elijah's body, made everyone assume that she was the one responsible for killing him. Only she knew the truth. She had only shot one arrow that night, and all it did was leave superficial wounds. It didn't injure him at all. The real killer was not her. It was, him. Though at that moment her head was dizzy, she remembered the moment when Elijah was killed. It was one swift sword movement so fast that Elijah, a D-rank villain had no time to react. What was even more impressive was the fact that he had done this, exactly when Elijah's guard was at its lowest. Almost as if he knew this was going to happen. Had he failed, only death would have been his outcome. 
Cold, precise, cunning, many words came into her mind as she tried to describe him the best way she could. Hey, hey, Amanda. Snapping Amanda out of her thoughts was Emma's concerned voice. Sorry, lowering her head, Amanda apologized. She was so lost in her own thoughts that she had ignored everyone that had come into the room. It's fine, you must still be in shock. Shaking her head, Emma patted Amanda on her shoulder as she gestured for the other guys in the room to leave. We'll let you have some rest, call us if you need anything. Winking at Amanda, Emma quickly brought everyone out of the room. Clank. Closing the room's door, silence permeated the room once again leaving a stunning young girl alone in her thoughts. Do you think she's okay? Standing outside Amanda's room, Emma looked at the four people beside her. Thinking for a bit Kevin said, dot HMM, honestly I can't tell. Her face is always indifferent so I'm not too sure. True, nodding her head, Emma couldn't help but agree with Kevin's evaluation. Despite the fact that Amanda had just gone through a traumatic experience, her expression never changed. She remained indifferent. Even for her who was extremely outgoing, talking to Amanda was difficult. She never knew what she was thinking. Did she even think of them as friends? Seeing everyone's somber expression, Kevin tried lightening up the mood by changing the topic. But hey, I didn't expect her to be strong enough to defeat a D-rank villain by herself. Yeah, you're right, who would have thought she was that strong? What do you think Melissa? Realizing what Kevin was trying to do, Emma redirected the conversation to Melissa. Hum? Melissa who was unamusingly scrolling through some research papers noticed that Emma was talking to her and unenthusiastically said. I guess it's pretty impressive, noticing how uninterested Melissa was, Emma pouted and said. Geez, can you at least look a little bit more interested? No chance, despite having known Amanda and the rest for a month and a half, to call them close would be a lie. Because she spent most of her time in the lab doing research, she barely had enough time to get to know them better. Not that she was interested in knowing them. To Melissa, anything that wasn't related to her research didn't really mean anything to her. Though to outsiders, it looked like they all got along well with each other. The only reason why they talked to each other in the first place was because they were living under the same roof and would make good connections for the future. Since they were all going to be future pillars of humanity, it wasn't a bad idea to make a connection with them. Moreover, for some reason, people always tended to avoid them. Jealousy? Fear? Worship? No one knew why they avoided them, but that only made their social circle smaller. Seeing how uninterested Melissa was, Emma sighed and looked at Jin. Behind Melissa, Jin stood there dumbly. His expression was that of pure indifference. He looked to be deep into his own world ignoring everyone around him. Well I'm gonna head back now, seeing that this conversation was going nowhere. Emma gave up and decided to leave. Following her, Kevin and Melissa left leaving Jin standing there by himself. A couple of minutes after everyone left, clenching his fist extremely hard, veins appeared on Jin's forehead. Though he tried extremely hard to suppress his rage, Jin's face became incomparably dark. Right now his mind was torn. Not only Kevin was stronger than him, dot but Amanda too. No matter how many times he tried to visualize it in his mind, killing a less than D greater than ranked villain was impossible for the current him. Though people assumed that he was ranked third because of his status and talent, no one knew how much he worked for his rank. He had come to the lock thinking that he was going to be the highest ranking first year. Dot yet when the results came out he was ranked third. Moreover, the gap between him and the first place, Kevin, was absurdly high. His failure to come first was also emphasized by his family who had high hopes for him. He was in total shock. He understood Melissa, her academic achievement was so absurdly high that it managed to propel her to second place, he was fine with that. Dot but Kevin? someone that no one knew about prior to entering the lock? It was a heavy blow to his immense pride. The pride of having grown up thinking that he was the best among the younger generation. Despite his failure, Jin did not let rage cloud his mind. Though he disliked Kevin, he looked at him more like an obstacle to surpass rather than an enemy. To try and bridge the gap between himself and Kevin, Jin trained two, no, three times harder than he had done previously. Dot and just when he had thought he managed to bridge the gap between them. Amanda killed a less than D greater than ranked villain. This news came as a shock for him, and even now that a day had passed he still couldn't stop thinking about it. Because Amanda's father was the guild master of the first ranking guild in the world, Demon Hunter, and his father was the greatest shareholder of the second ranked guild, Starlight Guild, he had known Amanda since young. Since birth, because of the rivalry between the two guilds, he had been continuously compared to her. He took great pride in the fact that he had gotten a higher rank than her when he enrolled in the lock. His father also took great pride in that as he praised him endlessly, further feeding his ego. He had managed to suppress that demon hunter, guild rising momentum. Dot yet this sense of accomplishment all seemed to be a lie. The more he stayed here, the more he realized how normal he was. He had been showered with praises since young. He became arrogant, but he managed to back his arrogance, he was the best. Dot was he? What am I? Staring at the long dark corridor, Jin was lost in his own thoughts. A seed of inferiority slowly started implanting itself inside of his mind. Chapter 49 A couple of days had passed since the party, but news of what had transpired during the party spread throughout the whole academy like wildfire. 
it was to the point that pretty much everyone knew what had happened. Currently, I was laying on my bed staring at the white ceiling of my room, lost in my own thoughts. I thought that since I didn't directly participate in the main plotline of the story that the future wouldn't change. I thought I had full control of my memories, so I decided to take advantage of them and help myself to some of the benefits whilst also trying to not affect the plotline. But I was wrong. No matter how small the change was, once it began, there was no stopping it. It suddenly hit me. One little change could cause massive changes to the whole story. It was like a domino chain. Regardless of how small the force was, once the first domino fell, like a chain reaction all the dominoes fell apart. I was naive, no. I was arrogant. Because of my arrogance, the plotline started changing. In a way that I was losing control of the advantage that I had as the author. The event between Elijah and Amanda should have never happened this early in the novel. Somehow my actions had affected the novel. Despite me repeating to myself that everything was going to be fine, I was simply lying to myself. I couldn't deny something that happened right before my eyes. I couldn't deny that my existence itself had changed the plotline. I fundamentally needed to change the way I was thinking. But how? Do I actively interact with the protagonists or keep myself in the shadows as I did before? I was lost. Ring. Snapping me from my thoughts was the sound of my cell phone ringing. Turning it on I looked at the notification that showed up. Amanda Stern, single-handedly defeats less than D greater than rank villain that had infiltrated the academy and posed as Elijah Turner, she had been Awa. It seems like the news was already starting to spread outside of the academy. During these past few days, Amanda managed to cement herself as one of the foremost geniuses in our generation. Ice Queen, Bow Goddess, Villain Killer. All sort of nicknames started circulating around the academy as everyone started paying attention to her. The reason for such attention was because. She single-handedly defeated a less than D greater than rank villain despite only being in the early stages of less than E greater than rank. A genius amongst geniuses. After the incident, she was now being compared to the likes of Kevin in terms of raw talent. Turning off my phone, I gave myself a pat on the back. It seems like I managed to cover my traces quite well as nothing was mentioned regarding me. It also seems that Thomas covered for me, preventing anyone from finding out that I was responsible for tipping them about the incident. Looks like I owe him one. Fortunately, apart from the small loophole, with the facts pointing towards Amanda, my daily life returned to what it was before. Well, that was how it was supposed to be like, but. After changing and heading to my classroom, I noticed two eyes deeply staring at me from the left side of the classroom. Awkwardly smiling, I lightly waved in Amanda's direction. I was hoping she would take then hint and leave me alone, but it seemed that my action only further increased the intensity of her stare. Does she perhaps have a grudge against me for putting her in the spotlight? I thought as I tried my best to look at the front, ignoring her piercing stare. It was plausible. Because of my action, the whole world was now paying attention to her. If something like this happened to me, I too would have held a grudge against myself. Sometimes fame was more of a curse than a blessing. Or did she perhaps misunderstand something regarding my strength? Now that I thought about it, she probably thought that I was someone who was hiding his strength. She was not wrong about that, but looking back at the event, she probably has a misconception about the true extent of my abilities. Though I did in fact kill a less than D greater than rank villain, many factors had come to play in me defeating him. If she had not distracted him with her last ditch attack, and if Elijah didn't underestimate me added with me having monarchs and differese, I would have never been able to kill Elijah. Me killing Elijah was something that many factors combined together helped me achieve, it wasn't something I could ever hope to achieve again. But, there were no what-ifs in this world and thus I was now stuck with Amanda thinking I was some sort of genius that was comparable to the likes of Kevin. This was honestly problematic. Hum. As I was lamenting at how Amanda probably misunderstood me, Melissa who was sitting three rows behind Amanda noticed her weird behavior and looked in the direction she was looking at. Soon her eyes paused on me. Raising her brow, Melissa rubbed her eyes a couple of times before making sure that Amanda was indeed looking at me. At first, she clicked her tongue, then suddenly a smirk appeared on her face. I instantly felt an ominous premonition. Just now, she did her signature smile. The smile signaled that she was onto something. Can I start crying already? This was why I didn't want to interact with her. Not only was she a sadistic girl who took pleasure in others' suffering, but she was the type to repay grudges many times fold. On the bright side, no one noticed the interaction that had just occurred. Emma and Kevin were currently busy talking with Miss Donna, and Jin was at the front of the classroom unusually quiet. If the fact that the class loner suddenly interacted with the two most beautiful girls in the academy was to spread, I could already start planning my funeral. The sheer amount of admirers those two have could probably fill 25 football fields, it was that ridiculous. Okay class is starting, please be seated everyone. Looking at the clock and seeing that it was time for class to start, Donna dismissed everyone that was in the front of the class and headed for the podium. Quiet please, gesturing for the class to quiet down, Donna lightly raised her palm, soon everyone stopped talking. Seeing how everyone shut up as soon as Donna spoke, I couldn't help but admire her even more. The degree of control she had over the class was quite impressive. With just a few words and gestures she managed to shut the whole class up. 
It may have something to do with the art she practices, but her natural charisma was not to be dismissed either. She just had this charm around her that made any man or woman follow whatever she said. Today we will select the groups you will be split into during our trip to Hallberg. Oh crap, forgot this was happening. Was too caught up with the Amanda thing that I had completely forgotten we had a class trip in about a week's time. I honestly didn't want to go. Please come to the front of the class and collect your ticket. Not caring about my predicament, Donna took a large box and put it in front of the podium. I'll call your name one by one in ascending order. Taking out her register, Donna continued, you are to take one ticket and that will be your group for the week that you will be in Hallberg, now let's start. Rank 1, Kevin Voss. Hearing his name being called, Kevin stood up and headed to where Donna was. Here? Yes, take a ticket and go back to your seat. Listening to Donna, Kevin reached his hand into the box and took a ticket. Instantly everyone's attention was drawn towards him. They were all curious about his group number. Being the number one ranked in the whole year, if anyone was paired up with him they were guaranteed results. This was shown multiple times in things such as in the virtual class and other group activities as he got the first rank in every one of those activities. Seeing everyone's reaction, I scoffed at them. Do you think that by freeloading on Kevin you will get a good grade? Hate to break it to you but this time you'll come back disappointed as an incident will prevent him from completing whatever he was supposed to do in Hallberg. Looking at his number, Kevin remained silent for a second before going back to his seat. To everyone's disappointment, he didn't show what group number he got. Well, that rule didn't apply to me who knew exactly what he got. His group was, group 7, and if I'm not wrong Melissa would end up being in the same group as him. Next, Melissa Hall, standing up, Melissa walked to the podium and took a ticket. Briefly glancing at the ticket, Melissa walked back to her seat. The stairs were just as intense as when Kevin had come up. This time it wasn't because of her ability, but more because of how beautiful she was. Next, Jin Horton, next, Ren Dover, finally. After who knows how long, my turn had finally come. Since everyone had gotten their ticket, most people ignored me. No one really cared about me so I didn't feel any eyes on me. Is what I wanted to say but, I found two sets of eyes focusing on me. Trying my best to ignore them, my mouth and brows twitched a couple of times. Without even glancing at me, Donna coldly said, take your ticket and leave. Trying to hide my bitterness at Donna's overly harsh tone, I reached out into the box and took a ticket. As soon as my hand was inside of the box I secretly channeled some of my mana into it. Though Melissa tried to hide it well, the small spell she cast inside of the box didn't escape my eyes. Taking out a ticket, I headed back to my seat. As I was walking up, I noticed Melissa's face crumbling. It looked as if she had eaten crap. It felt great. Secretly winking at her, I sat back in my seat and proceeded to ignore her. He he he, you think I wouldn't know what you were up to? Please, I am your creator. Do you think I wouldn't know about your petty tricks? As soon as I saw her smirk I knew she was up to something. Thinking back to my novel, I pretty much deduced what she was trying to do and broke the spell she placed inside of the box. She was probably trying to manipulate the tickets so that I would end up in a crappy group. Most probably, she was trying to group me with Amanda. Since she noticed how odd Amanda was behaving she must have thought she had a grudge against me or something, which wasn't wrong. Too bad for her, I already knew what she was trying to do and stopped whatever spell she placed inside of the box. Clap. Clapping once to gather everyone's attention, Donna said. Alright, now that everyone has found a group you may leave the class. Just as everyone was about to stand up to leave the class, Donna smacked her palm with her fist. Ah. One more thing, taking a ticket out of the box she flipped the ticket backward and said. Behind the ticket, you will find that there is a room number and a list of things you will need to bring and do during your trip. Please go to the room after you leave the class and discuss with your groups which task you will do. Listening to her and flipping over my ticket, I looked through the contents. Equals 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 Group 9, Group Room, A, B, 1, 5. Task. In-depth report on how monster parts are processed in a factory. The report must detail how monsters are skinned, processed, and turned into raw materials to be used in artifact creation. In-depth report on the different properties of monster parts, from density to breaking point, elasticity etc. Interview with the vice director of the factory and report their economic strategy and what sets them apart from other monster processing plants. Equals 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 this was part of the reason why I didn't want to go. The sheer amount of boring tasks we needed to do made me depressed. It just wasn't something I was looking forward to. All right, class dismissed, finished with what she wanted to say. Donna packed her stuff and left the classroom. Sighing, I stood up and went to the room I was supposed to go to meet my group. I hope I get a decent group. Though it was only a pipe dream, a man could still hope right. Chapter 50 Inside a small classroom that was about the size of a bedroom, two individuals sat facing each other. Of the two individuals, one was a female while the other was a male. 
The male had his head held down and was fearfully looking at the female who was looking at him with her legs and arms crossed. Her face was incomparably dark. It looked as if they were in a murder trial with the male student being the one under trial. Breaking the silence was the female whose voice sounded extremely dark. Ren. Dover. I it's been a while Melissa, yes, the boy who was currently being persecuted was in fact me. Sitting down in front of Melissa, I tried my best to avoid her eyes. Right now her face was smiling but her eyes weren't. I had a feeling that she wanted nothing more but to eat me alive. Why was she in a bad mood? Looking at my number and Melissa's number, a few tears streamed down my cheeks. Group 9. My plan backfired badly. W would you believe me if I told you it was an accident? Accident. Pray do tell me what might you be referring to. I do recall seeing an insect winking at me during our class. Or did I see wrong? Dot air. Please someone save me. Nervously looking around the room, my eyes paused on a black concoction in the middle of the table. Out of desperation, I tried to change the topic. This is. Expecting my question, Melissa dazzlingly smiled and said. New potion I've been experimenting with. Just for you, free of charge. Squinting my eyes, I moved my chair back and warily asked. What does it do? Covering her mouth with her hand, Melissa lightly laughed and said. Nothing much apart from making you throw up dozens of times over and making you feel like you had just been through hell. What makes this potion even more special is that if you are lucky enough there's a chance you can throw up your own intestine killing you instantly. Dot can I pass? It honestly scared me how she managed to say all of this with a straight face. Bam. Just as I was despairing at my situation, opening the door, three young prideful individuals entered the room. Looking around the room, they soon noticed Melissa who was sitting in front of me. Instantly their arrogance deflated a notch. Hello there. Melissa Hall, walking in front of Melissa, what seemed to be the leader of the trio elegantly bowed in front of her. His facial features which were devoid of any imperfections accompanied by his sharp eyes and brows made him look suave and elegant. He had short black hair and green eyes that resembled finely polished jades. Though he was not extremely handsome, his looks were enough to make any girl swoon. It is an honor to meet Melissa Hall, one of the most beautiful women in our academy and pioneer in the scientific field. Pausing, and fixing his uniform he said, my name is Donald Burson. Dot who? Another extra who thought they were the shit. Honestly, if the guy could read Melissa's mind at the moment he would have probably have made a run for it. Smiling, Melissa glanced at the young individual before her and said. You must be rank 167 Donald Burson whose father is an A-rank hero of the Starlight Guild. As soon as Melissa finished speaking, Donald straightened his back with pride, looking at me he smirked. Hum? What did I do? Do I even know you? Is he that proud that Melissa knew who he was? Ignoring Doolin's subtle action against me, Melissa smiled and politely said. How can I help you? To me it just looked like she was saying, be quick and fuck off, I don't have time to deal with you scrubs but maybe I was just too biased. Aw, oh, let me introduce the rest of the people before I continue. Stepping to the side, Donald presented one of the other group members. This is rank 298, Evan Smoke, standing behind Donald, a rather chubby individual with ginger hair and freckles all over his face appeared. With his hands behind his back, Evan haughtily looked around the room. Dot his demeanor reminded me of one of those villainous nobles you would find in novels. Smiling amiably, Evan lightly bowed in front of Melissa. Nice to meet you, Melissa Hall, I have heard of your outstanding achievements since I was very young. I have been eagerly awaiting the day where we would meet and upon seeing you I can say with confidence that there is no other woman out there that can confidently claim to be more beautiful than you. Talk about excessive flattery. Unlike Donald, I actually knew who he was. He was no one important per se, he was another extra. But this time, I actually knew him cuz I actually remembered writing about him. He appeared on the trip and arrogantly confronted Kevin only to be instantly shut down. True extra. After Evan finished his introductions, Donald turned to the remaining student. Dot and this is rank 475, Cassandra Lee, standing next to Evan, a rather skinny young female with a busket presented herself. With her hands in her blazer pockets and whilst chewing gum she looked at Melissa with interest. She had two piercings on her right lip and nose and her lips which were black. Accompanied by her eyes which were filled with eyeshadow reminded me of someone who was in their emo phase. She had black metal bracelets on her arm and her uniform was unkempt. Smiling lightly she looked at Melissa and said, pleasure to meet you. Greeting everyone, Melissa turned her attention back to Donald. Nice to meet you, so what do you want? Nothing much, we are in the same group so I wanted to introduce myself and my companions to you who is going to be part of our team. Since we still have about a week before going on the trip I thought it would be a great idea to form a good bond while we are at it, ha ha ha. Laughing lightly, Donald, Evan, and Cassandra eagerly looked at Melissa. Sigh. How more obvious can you be? If you wanted to hang out with Melissa you could have just said so from the beginning. Why go through all of this nonsense? Noticing my reaction, Donald stopped laughing and gloomily said. What's so funny? Rolling my eyes at his immature display I said. There's a week left before the trip and you're planning on making friends rather than just allocating our tasks. Annoyed by my rebuttal, Donald finally acknowledged my presence as he asked. 
Who are you? Rank 1750 ran Dover, instantly the whole room was filled with laughter and ridicule. Ha ha ha, rank 1750 and you dare talk to me like that? Ho ho ho, to think that someone who is ranked so low exists. I bet in terms of spouting crap his rank is around the top three in the whole year, no, the academy. Rolling my eyes at them I said, to think there was not only one delusional person here, but three? How disappointing. Instantly the room became quiet. Donald and the other two's faces instantly crumbled. After a brief pause, and processing what I had just said, Donald shouted. What? Summoning his spear from his dimensional space, Donald grabbed it and pointed its sharp tip at me. A blue glow appeared around his body. Shut that flimsy mouth of yours before I cut your tongue off with my superior skills and talent that a nobody like you can ever hope to have. Seeing him taking out his spear, summoning my sword from my bracelet, I grabbed it and a white glow started appearing around my body as I spat back. No, you shut your mouth. How more obvious can you be that you're a third-rate villain with your third-rate quotes? Hatefully glaring at me and gritting his teeth, Donald pretended to hit me with his spear but I didn't even flinch. Gur, seeing that his feint was seen through, Donald clenched his teeth even harder. Seeing his reaction, I triumphantly smirked at him and raised my middle finger. Wanna bet that I don't even need to lift my finger before I can decapitate that useless head of yours. You ooh bastard. Finally snapping after hearing my comment, Donald prepared to stab me for real. But before he could do that, he heard an annoyed sigh coming from behind him. Sigh, is it fun to waste time like this? Sitting on the table, Melissa covered her face with her hands. Melissa. Stopping, Donald and the rest looked at Melissa who seemed to be in an extremely bad mood. Why are you all acting like children? B but he started it. Snapping at him, Melissa looked at Donald in utter disgust. What? Are you some kind of child? He started this he started that. Do you know how many fucks I give about that? Raising her hand, she did an O sign with her fingers and said. Absolutely zero, being berated by Melissa, the rest lowered their heads in shame. If it was anyone else they would have probably have fought back, but since it was Melissa they could only suck it up. Every time someone tried to talk they would immediately be glared at by Melissa shutting them up instantly. Clicking her tongue, Melissa continued, stop flapping those useless mouths of yours and do the work. We were asked to talk about our work. I had come with the expectations that the people in my group would be regular humans but it seems like I was paired up with a bunch of useless chickens and buffoons that can only dance around wildly yapping their mouths nonstop. Frankly, shut up. Your mere existence is annoying me. BB. Raising her hand to stop them from talking, Melissa glared at them and said. Don't want to hear it. If you want to do me a favor just stop breathing. You'll be plenty useful then. He he seeing the trio's deflated looks I couldn't help but laugh lightly. Karma got them good. And you why are you smiling? Hum. Yes you. Dot you were the most useless of the lot and yet you dare enjoy this like it's some sort of show? B-U-T. Shut up, and follow their example and stop breathing. Shutting up. I dared not to utter a single word. I was pretty sure she realized I was making fun of them from the beginning and thus why she was glaring at me the hardest. Turning my head right, the first thing that caught my sight was the trio smirking in my direction, seemingly enjoying my predicament. Squinting my eyes at them I made a mental note to myself. It seems like three more names will be added to my long list of people who I should beat up. Just you wait. I will definitely turn those smiles upside down. Sigh. Alright let's get this over with. Seeing that everyone had started to become more obedient, Melissa sat back on her seat, crossed her legs, and looked through the tasks which we were supposed to do. It had to be noted that she was the only one sitting as the rest of us were still standing with our backs straight not daring to utter a single word. You and you will be responsible for the first task. Pointing at Cassandra and Evan, Melissa apathetically spoke as she allocated their task not caring for their opinion. You and you will be responsible for the second task, whist I will do the third task alone. Looking to my left, my eyes met Donald's. Our eyes both screamed, hell no. But we just pretended to smile at each other in a friendly manner. The groups were Cassandra and Evan for task 1, me and Donald for task 2, and Melissa for task 3. I wanted to rebuke so badly, but I didn't dare to. I'm sure Donald shared the same sentiment as me, but we were both too scared of Melissa to dare speak out our thoughts. Alright, I've wasted enough time babysitting the lot of you. I'm heading back now, I have better things to do, throwing the group ticket away, Melissa stood up and left the room. Right after her, everyone else left the room, me included. Staring at the now darkening sky, I let out an exhausted sigh. This was going to be a long trip.